Have you ever wondered how data travels over the internet? Each time you stream a movie, send an email, or browse a web page, data is transmitted from one point to another through an invisible highway known as the internet. This process, known as data transmission, is what keeps our digital world spinning. You might think it's as simple as sending a letter, but it's a complex process involving multiple layers and protocols. It's like a well-orchestrated dance where every performer knows their role and timing to perfection. Understanding this process is crucial, whether you're a network engineer maintaining the flow of information or a curious mind wanting to know how this intricate ballet of data happens. But how does it all work? How does a simple click translate into a cascade of information traveling at light speed across the globe? To fully understand this, we need to delve into the OSI and TCP IP models. First, let's talk about the OSI model, the Open Systems Interconnection Model. This model is a theoretical construct, a guideline, if you will, that's used to understand and describe how different network protocols interact and work together to provide network services. Picture the OSI model as a seven-story building. Each floor represents a layer of the model, each with its own unique set of responsibilities and tasks. From the ground up, we have the physical, data link, network, transport, session, presentation, and application layers. The physical layer right at the bottom is all about the nitty-gritty of hardware, cables, hubs, and the electrical signals passing through them. It's the foundation upon which all other layers stand. Above it, we have the data link layer. This layer is the traffic cop of the network managing how data is sent and received over the physical network, dealing with error detection and correction. The third layer, the network layer, is like the building's postal service. It's responsible for routing data across networks, ensuring your data packets get to the right address. Layer 4, the transport layer, is the delivery manager. It ensures complete data transfer, handling error checking and recovery and flow control. The session layer, Layer 5 is the event planner. It sets up, manages, and terminates connections between applications. The sixth layer, the presentation layer, is the translator. It ensures data is in a usable format, converting it if necessary, so the application layer can understand it. Finally, at the top, we have the application layer. This is the layer that interacts with software applications, providing network services directly to the user's applications, like your web browser or email client. Each of these layers plays a crucial role in data transmission. They work together like a well-oiled machine to ensure data gets from one device to another seamlessly and efficiently. While it's a theoretical model, the OSI model provides a critical framework for understanding how networks function and how different network protocols interact. Now, we'll delve deeper into each layer of the OSI model. Starting from the bottom, we have the physical layer. Think of it as the highway of our model. It deals with the physical aspects of data transmission, including bitstream transmission, network topologies, and physical connections. Moving up, the data link layer is like the traffic police. It creates a reliable link between two directly connected nodes, manages error detection and control, and regulates the flow of data. Next stop, the network layer. This is the layer responsible for routing and transferring data sequences. It's like a GPS, determining the best path for your data to reach its destination. The transport layer is our delivery service. It ensures complete data transfer, reassembles the data, and checks for any errors. It's also responsible for end-to-end -end error recovery and flow control. The session layer is your appointment book. It establishes, maintains, and terminates connections between applications at each end. It's like setting up a meeting and ensuring it ends on time. The presentation layer is the translator. It translates the data for the application layer, encrypts and decrypts data for security, and compresses data to save space. Finally, we reach the application layer. This is the layer that interacts with software applications. It's like the user interface, providing services like email, file transfer, and web browsing. Each layer has its own unique role, 
yet they all work together seamlessly. The beauty of the OSI model lies in its division of network communication into these seven distinct yet interconnected layers. This division allows each layer to focus on a specific function, facilitating troubleshooting and network design. With the OSI model, we can see how complex yet organized data transmission is. It's like a well-oiled machine, with each part playing a crucial role. Whether it's sending an email or browsing the web, the OSI model is hard at work behind the scenes, making sure your data gets where it needs to go. Next on our list is the TCP IP model, also known as the Internet Protocol Suite. This model is the bedrock of the Internet as we know it today, a true game changer in the world of data communication. The TCP IP model is a condensed version of the OSI model with only four layers to its name. But don't let that fool you. Each layer is packed with functions vital to the smooth running of our internet-based operations. Let's dive into these four layers, shall we? First up is the network interface layer. This is the layer that interacts directly with the network hardware. It's responsible for transmitting raw bits over the network, dealing with details like MAC addresses and physical connections. Moving up, we come to the internet layer. This is where things start to get interesting. The internet layer is in charge of sending packets across potentially multiple networks. It's the layer that makes the internet, well, the internet. It's all about routing and IP addresses here. Next is the transport layer, the layer that ensures data gets to where it needs to go and in the right order. The transport layer is all about end-to-end -end connections and reliability. It's the layer that uses TCP to ensure all packets arrive in the correct order. And finally, we have the application layer. This is the layer that interfaces with your applications. It's the layer that allows you to send an email, browse a web page, or stream a video. This layer includes protocols like HTTP, FTP, and SMTP. So there you have it, the TCP ARSH IP model in a nutshell. Four layers, each with a unique and important role in data transmission. It's not as detailed as the OSI model, but it's the model that runs the internet. And that's pretty impressive. Just like the OSI model, each layer of the TCP IP model has a specific role to play. Scene script. Time to look closer at each layer of the TCP IP model. Starting from the bottom, we have the network interface layer. This is the layer where data gets its physical form. It's the realm of both hardware and software, where bits are converted into electrical signals or perhaps light pulses, depending on the medium. The network interface layer ensures the data packets can travel across the network physically. Next up, we have the internet layer. This layer is all about addressing and routing. It's where the IP or internet protocol comes in. The internet layer encapsulates data into IP packets, assigns them with source and destination IP addresses, and determines the best path for them to travel across the network. Think of it like the postal system. It makes sure your letter gets to the right address. Moving on to the transport layer. This is where TCP, or Transmission Control Protocol, does its magic. TCP is like a reliable postman ensuring that all the data packets arrive at their destination and in the correct order. It also controls the size and rate of data exchange, preventing network congestion. If data transmission was a symphony, then the transport layer would be the conductor. Finally, we reach the application layer. This is the layer that interacts directly with software applications, translating the data into a form that they can understand. It's also where protocols like HTTP and FTP work, enabling functionalities like web browsing and file transfer. The application layer is like the translator between the network and the software. In summary, each layer of the TCP IP model has a specific role in the data transmission process. From the physical transmission of data, to addressing and routing, to ensuring reliable delivery, and finally to software interaction, Every layer contributes to the smooth functioning of internet communication. It's clear that the TCP IP model is indispensable when it comes to internet communication. We've covered a lot of ground today, 
we embarked on a journey through the intricate world of data transmission, diving deep into the foundational OSI and TCP IP models. These models act like roadmaps, guiding data packets from one point to another across the vast expanse of the Internet. We explored the OSI model, a seven-layered conceptual framework that offers a detailed look into the functions of data transmission. From the physical layer dealing with raw binary data, all the way up to the application layer which interacts with software applications. Then we ventured into the TCP IP model, a streamlined four-layered model focusing on practical implementation. We looked at how this model simplifies things from network interface to internet transport and finally the application layer. Remember, understanding these models is key to understanding how data travels over the internet. So keep exploring, keep learning and see you in our next video.